Well, hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk, as we continue on in our study of the Sermon on the Mount, the guide to true Christianity. That's right. Hallelujah. Uh, we're going to pick up, we're going to continue on. Last week, in our last program, we were talking about blessed are the meek, they shall inherit the, the earth. Mm -hmm. And we we want to talk today in this program about inheriting the earth, okay? But before we do that, I'm going to ask Mark to ask God's blessing upon our time. Oh Lord, we just thank you for your word, and we just, we just thank you for the Holy Spirit that was sent for our understanding of the word. Mm -hmm. Just let there be more of it, the understanding that is. Amen. Amen. So, Alice and I and Mark... I want to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we begin this. And as I said, we're going to pick up from where we left off in the last program. Mm -hmm. But first of all, I want, to, I want to make this statement. I want to bring this to all of our attention. The Beatitudes, like the rest of the whole Word of God, are not a menu to pick and choose from. You can't say that, oh, I think I'll take the poor in spirit, but that persecuted part, no, I don't want to. No, you know, it's, it's all or nothing. That's the way it is, okay? So the plan of God is that we, the remnant, the believers, the children of God, the disciples, that we would have the kingdom of heaven, that we would be comforted, that we would inherit the earth, that we'd be satisfied, that we'd receive mercy, that we would see God, that we would be called sons of God, and that we would receive that great reward in heaven. Amen. All of it, all of it. As I said, these are not here, the Beatitudes are not here to choose from, but to live each one fully each day of our lives. That's right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So in the study that we're doing right now, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. It would be equally correct, if not more so, to translate that as, for they would inherit the land. Okay, mm -hmm. with me? Mm -hmm. There's, a, there's a, a difference. Now, I'll tell you that, that the word, the Greek word that's used in the New Testament is used almost interchangeably throughout the New Testament uh, as either earth or land, typically. But the uh, Young's literal translation here translated, translates it as land. And that same Greek word is translated 42 times in the King James Version of the Bible as land. Okay? So you might say, okay, what's the difference? Well, if you know any observant Jews, <clears throat> and, and as we do, we, we have friends who are Jewish, spent time with them in Israel. If you ask them what the Hebrew means, haaretz. That's what's translated. That's kind of the, that's the Hebrew equivalent of the word in Greek, right? Haaretz is the land. It's also translated as the earth, all right? Well, you know that it's the whole earth. There is Haaretz, there is the Greek, the, the, the earth, but then there is the land, capital T, capital L. That's the land of Israel, the land of the promise. <clears throat> and it is the land of promise. You know, God spoke in Exodus 3.17, it says, So I said, I will bring you up out of, the, out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite, to a land flowing with milk and honey. Exodus 3.17. I didn't say bingo. Okay. This land is my land. The bingo is not in there. Land. That's what I said. That's why I didn't say it. But that's the land of promise. That's the land. Okay. Haaretz, by the way, is, I mean, when you say that to any observant Jew, they know that you are speaking of Israel. There's no, one of the principal newspapers 
daily newspapers in Israel is called Haaretz. Mm -hmm. okay. So inheriting the land here in this verse. By the way, I say it's it, yeah. Well, you you know you've been following us along in Matthew chapter five, right? Inheriting the land is a reference to gaining the promised land. Now, that's what's important, because that's, that's what we're looking for, is that promised land. So it's Jesus, once again, letting the scriptures that fill his heart be the abundance of his mouth. He's not teaching something new in this sermon. He's explaining scripture, the law and the prophets, and bringing new, clear understanding of the Father's plan. His purpose and his power. Right? Mm -hmm. Jesus, I mean, we have the revelation of Jesus, but you want to know something? Jesus is revelation. Yes, he is. The secret of the Lord is for those who fear him, mm -hmm. and he will make them know his covenant. That's Psalm 25, 14. When we see Jesus, it is, it, that is the revelation, the fullness of God. All, of the, all the fullness of the, the day dwells in him. So who will inherit the promised land. The meek. Well, the, the, that's right. The meek. <laughs> we talked about this a lot in our last program. The humble. Those are the ones that God is seeking. Those who have humbled themselves that God can exalt. But it says in Psalm 25 that who is a man who fears the Lord? He will instruct him in the way he should choose. His soul will abide in prosperity and his descendants will inherit the land. And then in Psalm 37, verse 9, it says... For evildoers will be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord, they will inherit the land. Right. Who will inherit the land? Well, according to Genesis 15, Genesis 15 Abraham and his descendants yes. will inherit the land. It says in Romans 4, Paul wrote, For this reason it is by faith, in order that it may be in accordance with grace, so that the promise will be guaranteed to all the descendants, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Romans 4.16. He is the father of our faith. Yes. Where is the promised land? Well, Jesus said, and it's written in Revelation, And behold, I am coming quickly. And my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments. Sounds like one of the Beatitudes. Mm -hmm. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. Revelation 22, verses 12, 13, and 14. You see, that's the goal. When Adam sinned and broke that, that relationship with God, right, and was kicked out of the garden, he was taken away from the tree of life. Yes. Getting back to the but tree of life. That's God's purpose, is to restore us back to that place where we have that relationship and back with the, the, the tree of life. Mm -hmm. And that's what it says. That's where Jesus is bringing us. Mm -hmm. Back to the garden in the city of our great God. Hallelujah. <laughs> and oh, what a day of rejoicing that will be. You know, I've heard and seen, you know, I'll say this again. I know we have had the opportunity. We've been blessed. I mean, I have spoken and taught and preached in probably 25 different denominations. All over, five continents. So I, I run across people, and so many people have these different theories about the end times. Yes. You know, what it's going to be like, are we going to be here on earth, are we going to be the new earth, it's going to come a new heaven and a new earth, are we going to be here, are we going to be sitting in an office administrating things, are we going to be in heaven, what do we, you want to say, I don't know, I don't know. I've seen so much controversy about that, okay, but then I think of Daniel's conversation with the archangel Michael, when they were speaking of the end times, and Daniel said, as for me, I heard, but could not understand. So I said, my Lord, what will be the outcome of these events? And he said, go your way, Daniel, for these words are concealed and sealed up until the end time. Daniel 12, verses 8 and 9. You see, there's an, as Solomon wrote, there's an appointed time for everything. There's an appointed time. You know, 
everything's been revealed to us. I, I believe that from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, we've had the revelation, but we don't have all the understanding, right. which is why it says over and over in Proverbs that we need to seek understanding. Okay? And the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, if that's the case, let me jump ahead here in the Sermon on the Mount just a little bit. Amen. Because if you're wondering, and you've got these thoughts or concerns or questions about those very last days, let me jump ahead here in the Sermon on the Mount. If you remember last week, I said you can't, we're going through this a verse at a time, sometimes a word at a time. But you have to see there is a whole message here that Jesus taught. And a little further on in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, So do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Don't worry about tomorrow. You know, live today. It's, it's so true what I, that I see in the world that people generally either live in the past, living on their memories of what used to be, or they're so dissatisfied with the, the present, they're living on hopes for the future, and they're missing today. But today is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. And I, for, as for me, I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. I am going to live to the fullest in the Spirit of God this day. Okay. So let me go back to the beginning once again, to the time of Abraham. It says in Hebrews, Hebrews 11, 8, By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed by going out to a place which he was to receive for an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. So God gave him the command, said, hey, you're going out, sent him out, but didn't tell him where. He had to go on his journey without knowing what the final destination would be when he left, right? Now, Alice and I have traveled so many places, as I say, not knowing in advance where we would be exactly mm -hmm. or where we would be able to stay. That's yeah. true. It was true in Central America. Where Mark was in Central America with us. It's been true in the, in the Caribbean. It's been true over in England and London and Manchester. It's Paris. been true in Scotland. It's been true in Ireland and Israel and France and Paris, yes, as you say, in West Africa and East Africa. God has sent us to these places, and we had no idea what our, what our accommodations would be when we got there. Exactly. And, I mean, we have stayed... You know, we've stayed in huts where there was where there was nothing, no running water, no electricity. You slept on the on the floor. I mean, we've been there. Um, we've stayed in little teeny hotels that were primitive. By the same token, we've been blessed a couple a couple of times, and this looks like it may happen again. Praise God! We were in Paris, and a dear brother who's involved in our ministry worked for the Hilton uh, hotels and got us a friends and family rate. And we were in the Paris Hilton, right outside the, the Eiffel Tower. So we don't know. We've, we stayed in houses. You know, we get to some place, and somebody would say, will you come stay with us? Mm. And when that, when that time folded, somebody else would invite us to come stay. And that's how we travel around the world. We're getting ready to go back on the road and do that again. And the simple fact of the matter is, we don't know what lies ahead. What lies ahead. Except God Except has planned. And we trust you. Here's what I do know for sure. I mean, you know, we have a general idea right now. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to spend a couple of months traveling around the U.S., but we're never certain about how even that will work out. Mm -hmm. Then we're headed over to Europe. We're going into Spain and then up to Paris to teach and then probably head straight over to England. But we're never quite sure. Never quite sure. But here's what I am sure of. Here's what I am persuaded of. Mm -hmm. Here's what I have a certainty about. He will lead us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. And he will meet all of our needs and supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Because he never fails. He has, we've never. been doing this a long time. He has yet to fail us. And I promise you, I have no expectation that he ever will. He never fails. No. And, you know, I'll be perfectly honest with you. You know, there certainly have been times when I've failed him. But he's never failed me. Hallelujah. Even when I'm faithless, he's faithful. Amen. Praise God. So whether it was a floor, a dirt floor in Douala, Cameroon, or the home of a brother and sister in the UK, or that hotel in, in Paris, God always supplies and we always have a place to be. The important thing is that we be where we have the opportunity 
to do the work that he's called us to, and that's to share the good news, to preach Christ and him crucified. And you know what? It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. To be available. We have to be available. Because he will always give us the opportunity to do that. And you know, in one of the seminars that I do, I always talk about the fact that, I'll tell you my definition of, one of my definitions of faith is having the, a vision to see with your heart what you can't see with your eyes. And I talk about the fact that we have to have, you know, it says where there is no vision, the people perish. That's right. That we have to have the vision to see the opportunities that God puts before us. But then you have to have the boldness to seize the opportunities that God puts before you. Mm -hmm. And the simple fact of the matter is, with the Spirit of God indwelling you, you do have the boldness. Yes. The Holy Spirit. But your flesh will often try and stop that. Yeah. The flesh will try and, well, it says. Well, quench. Quench. Well, <laughs> quench. Well, we can maybe make up a new word. <laughs> but, you know, Paul wrote to the Thessalonians and said, don't quench the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So it's possible to do that. And the only thing that will do that. Is, is being led by your flesh rather than by God's yes. spirit. This is the core message of the Sermon on the Mount. Mm. Think about this. I'm gonna, I want to read to you, and I, I am getting ahead of myself a little bit. We're going to come back and we'll do this in much more detail later on. In Matthew 6, I'm going to read verses 24 to 33, some verses, selected verses in there, right? In verse 24, it says, no one can serve two masters. And then Jesus says, you cannot serve God and mammon, wealth. He says, for this reason, I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Don't worry. Do not worry then, it says in verse 31, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? Or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Blessed are, we're talking about the Beatitudes, blessed are, blessed are, blessed are those who know that God blesses the poor in spirit. We're blessed when we know that he comforts those who mourn. Yes. We're blessed that he has prepared a place for his own who depend on his strength and power rather than their own. Mm -hmm. We're blessed that he satisfies those who seek his righteousness, pursue his righteousness. We're blessed that he is merciful towards us. Amen. And we are blessed that he calls us his own children. We know that we are blessed because it says in Galatians 3, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, in order that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we would receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Mm -hmm. God's purpose in our lives is blessing. Amen. Okay? Now, you know, he's called us to have purpose here in this life. Yes. Absolutely. But through all of that, he wants to bless us. Well, it's not a chore. It's abundant life. Because it's not a chore to serve him. No. It it's not a burden to, mm -hmm. to serve. You know, we're not supposed to have the... This is why he can say to us, be anxious for nothing. Okay. Because it says, you know, cast your care on him because he cares for you. Right. There is no burden to serving God. Mm -hmm. The distraction is the enemy. Yes. And the enemy is the devil. The enemy is your flesh. Go look in the mirror and you'll see the one who bugs you the most. Mm -hmm. The blessings are there. And I don't want to say that there's a formula for it, but there's pretty much a formula for it. <laughs> Deuteronomy 28. Yes. If you hear his voice and you obey his voice, and then all of the blessings of God will come upon you. They'll overtake you. As you used to say, they'll, they'll flat run, run you over. over. <laughs> well, it's it's so true. You see, I, I see Christians all over, and they are desperately searching for blessing. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, and it's like here, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all the rest gets added to you. It's like that. If you are obeying God, you don't have to seek God's blessings. The blessings will seek you. 
He'll come Absolutely. after you. They'll overtake yes. you. He'll bless you in the city. He'll bless you in the country. He'll bless you your spouse. He'll bless your children. He'll bless your, your work, the work of your hands. He'll bless everything in your life if you hear his voice and obey him. Yes. That's the formula. And it's not a burden. No. It is meant to be a blessing. It's not onerous to serve God. It's not hard. It's not difficult. The challenge is that there is an enemy. You know, there's a cartoon character. I, I probably mentioned this. For, I remember from my youth. He was a, what was he? He was a possum, Pogo. Mm -hmm. very, it was a very famous cartoon strip, daily cartoon strip in the newspapers in my youth. You didn't even know they had newspapers back then. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> And there's a, one most famous cartoon. He is out with his friend, the alligator, and they're in a little boat on the swamp that they lived in. And it's all messed up and everything. And Pogo says, we have met the enemy, and he is us. There's always a raging battle going on between your flesh and your spirit. Paul says that. It's a constant conflict. And that flesh always wants you to be anxious, always wants you to be concerned, always wants you to be burdened when, when Jesus is trying to lift that from you so that you can have the fullness of this life. And the problem is, and this is one of the things in that most important parable of all parables, the sower and the seed, he said these are the things that can choke the word in your life, is the concerns of the world and the deceitfulness of riches. The Sermon on the Mount says you're free from that. You're free from that. That's what that's what that verses are, or those verses are from, from Matthew chapter 6. He'll take care of you. Look at it. He takes care of the little birds of the sky. Are you not worth more than they? And he said his burden is light and his yoke is easy. easy. I mean, he said that. <laughs> so it's true. It is true. And you want to know something? If you are saved by the shed blood of the Lamb, if you call Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, yes. you can do this. Yes. You can, as Paul says, do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Mm -hmm. He may not call you to acts, all acts of faith like, like Peter. You know, mm -hmm. there were 12 disciples in that boat going across the sea when Peter saw Jesus walking on the water and said, Lord, if that's you, call me. And Peter stepped out on the, on the water. You know what? Only one out of the 12 stepped out on the water. Mm -hmm. But he waited for Jesus to call him, so he heard the voice of the Lord, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the words. Right. He may not call you to step out of that boat onto walk on water, but I promise you, he's going to call you to step out in faith yes. and trust in him. And just like Peter stepping out on water, a fisherman all of his life, and a family of fishermen who knew that you can't walk on water, he may call you to some things that look impossible, but they're never impossible. For nothing is impossible with God. Hallelujah. The purpose of this is blessing. Mm. He is bringing us into that place where we have the behavior and the attitudes of the righteous. Thank you, and the righteous, like Paul, are supposed to walk always in the triumph of Christ Jesus. Yes. We are supposed to be living in high victory that the world can see. That victory is not you beating everybody else up. That victory is that you can walk through the darkness and know that nothing can harm you. Mm -hmm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. We are supposed to have that peace that passes yes. understanding. Yes. And trust me, that peace that passes understanding is closely tied to this verse we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Because it talks about, you know, let not your heart be troubled. I go to prepare a place for you. Yes. It's about that destination that awaits us. Mm -hmm. Knowing that you shall inherit the land, oh, the promised land, yes. knowing that you shall be with in the presence of God, that presence of God. God wants you to walk in victory. Not so that you can show people and, and you know, have their moves. So they can look at you and see Christ in you. And seeing Christ in you, they will be drawn to him through you. Because our purpose in being this in this world, like we studied in the, the verse before this, is that you have a ministry of reconciliation. Yes. You. you have the power mm -hmm. to present Christ and Him crucified to a lost and dying world because that is the power of God unto salvation. 
The word of the cross is the power of God unto salvation. Share the love of God. Share the word of God. Find out how that blesses you. You know, so often I hear, and this is one of the problems when we started, we talked about this a little bit. You know, the Beatitudes, says, oh, this is about what I'm going to get, what I'm going to get, what I'm going to get. Do you believe the words of Jesus Christ? Absolutely. She says yes. Mm -hmm. How about you? How about you? Do you believe him when he said it is more blessed to give than to receive? Yes. You are an earthen vessel filled with a treasure. And that treasure is the love of God. That treasure is the word of God. And you have the power to be blessed by sharing that with others. To go out into this lost, dying world, the darkness of this world, and bring the light of Christ. Is that what he said in the Sermon on the Mount? Yes. You are the light of the world. Yes. To bring and add taste to a tasteless, tasteless world, because you're the salt of the earth. We are studying the, 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 the Sermon on the Mount because it is about us fulfilling our ministry as, as the ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We all have, we may have different ministries. And if you're not sure what your ministry is, and you do, if you're a Christian, you have a ministry. Seek the Lord. Find out. And remember that ministry is about what you can give. Right. Not about what you can get. Serving. But about how you can serve. That is what it's about. Because there is such blessing in being a servant of the Most High God. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. We were under a curse. And by the way, let me let me tell you something now. Just I get off track just a little bit. I've been so many places where so many Christians are afraid of being cursed. Mm -hmm. You know that. Well, I mean, we spend a lot of time in places where they have witch doctors, yes. where these pagan religions talk about putting curses on. You know what? When when David went out on the battlefield with Goliath. Goliath the giant, little young David. Goliath cursed David by his gods. Cursed him. How'd that work out for Goliath? He lost his head. You were in a chapter, Go, Go, Galatians chapter 3. Yes, I was. And it said there like two or three times, two times I think, curses everyone who Magnum. hangs on a tree. Mm -hmm. And in verse 13, it says, became a curse for us. Yeah. I mean. It's so clear. It, you, yeah. it, <laughs> this crystallizes it. You cannot be cursed. He no. took the curse upon he, himself. He took the curse He upon will himself. not allow anybody to curse you or to let that curse stand. That's right. One of the reasons, let me just say this, is because, you know, your life is not the flesh. I, you know, I've, I have been healed, mightily healed, quite a few times in my life by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of God Almighty. Mm -hmm. But you want to know something? Even Look at me closely. This flesh is perishing even as you watch. God didn't save this flesh, right? He saved my spirit. My life is in my spirit. Yes. And my spirit is sealed. Sealed. I am sealed in the Holy Spirit. He, the devil can't get to that. Yeah. He absolutely can't get to that. He's right. The curse has been broken. Jesus Christ hung on that cross and he said, it, it is finished. finished. Just like our program is now. <laughs> well, I, I just pray that you, you have conversations with the Lord about all of this. And you walk in the blessings of God. Because he has so many blessings for you. And Father, we just thank you for that. And we thank you, Lord, that you can use us to be that visible witness of your love and power in this world. Father, and I just ask that we walk in that in Jesus' name. God bless you and goodbye. Till next time we meet. On a hill far away Stood an old rugged cross The emblem of suffering and shame But I love that old cross Where the dearest and best For a world of lost sinners